God. If the hairdressers don't open soon, I'm just gonna be a fringe and a bow tie. Good evening, Mr. Bond fans, and welcome once again to a video that for the longest time I was not terribly keen on the idea of making. Um, but seen as I'm getting comments regarding this, I just thought I would best off just make a, a, a video and all of the comments about this particular subject can just sort of be contained here and, and that way we, you know, the discussion doesn't kind of filter out into other videos where this topic has no relevance. So if you're terribly involved in James Bond social media and the like, it is more than likely that you have seen God, not even if you're involved in Bond social media, just like if you have looked at, uh, you know, any kind of mainstream news outlets website in the last week or so, this spoiler has probably just popped out considering that there was pretty much hardly any attempt at all to treat this as sensitive you know, spoiler content uh, for people who are quite excited about the film on a lot of these news outlets. It's just like, you know, Guardian, Daily Mail, all these things, it's just like, the spoiler was just there in the headlines. I certainly made a decision. I knew that this spoiler content was out there. I'd heard about it. I'd heard about there being spoilers out there, not what it was. And I put out on my Twitter, I was like, all right, I'm gonna step back for a bit until this has kind of died down. I don't want it spoiled. And then I come to YouTube, I read the comments on one of my latest videos and it's just there. Someone had just put it out there and it's frustrating because it means that, and you know, when I went on Facebook, people had posted it in some of the James Bond discussion groups and just like, what does everyone think of this? And it's like, huh. And I kind of blame the, I mean, I think some people do just like seeking out spoilers and like, you know, posting about them and whatever. But I think that the, the mainstream news outlets that reported on this set a... Uh, a set a precedent actually just by putting it in the headlines and not even treating it like it is a a secret thing that might you know spoil the film for for people who are wanting to remain um you know uh remain quite um you know not <laughs> look into the, the plot details terribly it kind of set a precedent for oh we can just all openly talk about this so i was getting tagged in like you know sharing the article and stuff, the, the people sharing the article, and I guess it just, because it's, it's just there in the headlines, it's like, oh, we can just talk about this because it's not terribly sensitive, even though it is and should have been treated as such. Joe Darlington of Being James Bond posted a video reacting to these um, spoilers, as well as sort of just the, the, the culture <laughs> that we're in at the moment, where, you know, news media think that they can just splash this information in headlines and it'll all be fine. Um, he did a really good kind of breakdown about the problems of this, so I recommend you go and see um, his video on the subject as well. Um, we're in complete agreement about sort of how these spoilers have been treated by news outlets. Um, we, uh, me and Joe differ somewhat on the on our reactions to the the content of the spoilers, which is what I'm about to come up to talking about now. So if you have clicked on this video and you're not spoiled and you want to remain spoiled, please don't go any further because I'm going to be talking about a couple of the major um, points to to be drawn from these leaks um, and. Yeah, if you know, if you want to be unspoiled, just um, yeah, end this video now and come back in November when um, you know the film is actually out. So these leaks came from someone put a call sheet up on eBay, a call sheet from No Time to Die, and on film sets, call sheets kind of outline what scenes are being filmed, which characters need to be there, which actors need to be there, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and there were a, quite a lot of details uh, that came out of this. Some of them quite minor, uh, revolving around secondary characters and some, like, details about the locations and that kind of thing. The main one that all of the news outlets picked up on was that, uh, there is a five-year-old girl involved in No Time to Die, a character called Mathilda? Matilda? I, I don't know how I'm uh, pronouncing that just yet, but, um, yeah, and there is speculation that this five-year-old girl, given the time jumps that are gonna take place in No Time to Die, could in fact be James Bond's daughter. I wasn't actually terrified 
terribly shocked by the daughter news, if I'm being completely honest. I feel like there'd been some speculation about there perhaps being a young child in the film that Bond was going to interact with since the trailer came out, and there was that one shot where people were kind of wondering, who is that in the back? Is that Madeline, or is that a young girl? It's So I, I, fe I felt like I was kind of braced for this um, in, in some ways. So my immediate reaction to kind of seeing this news, beyond the fact that it had been spoiled for me when I didn't want it to be spoiled, my immediate reaction was just kind of like, huh, okay. I find it quite difficult to get, get too um, involved or emotional about ideas in concept because it's all about execution. Like, like Spectre, for example, Bond and Blofeld being brothers, I'm sure that there is some universe out there where that plot works and where it's well handled. Um, so, for example, in Skyfall, like, the idea that Judy Dench's M was going to be killed off is probably something that, in concept, I'm not a big fan of, I don't think, but then how it's executed and handled in the film, it's done really well. So I find it difficult to get too passionate about the idea of there being this young girl in Bond and she's Bond's daughter. I find it difficult to get too passionate or uh, have, have terribly strong opinions about it until the actual film comes out. Obviously, there's precedent for this in Fleming. In some of the later books, Bond does actually have a, a, a child. Um, Fleming didn't live long enough to kind of adapt that into any kind of major story, and I don't feel like I'm spoiling anything for people who are planning on reading the Fleming books by bringing this up, because it's not really a, a big plot detail, it's just kind of a small thing thrown in, in, into the end of a story, to be perfectly honest. So, um, yeah, so th there is precedent for it in Fleming, and I think adapting that, seeing how that could play out, I'm, I'm intrigued, colour me interested. However, there is further speculation that this character could in fact be a clone of Madeline. There are rumours about Safin's villainous scheme uh, involving cloning or, you know, genetic modification, something along those lines, and, you know, uh, Madeline, Mathilda, it's kind of, huh, okay, and and I guess if we're to go by what we've seen in the trailers and everything, it does kind of look like Safin and Madeline had some kind of interaction when Madeline was really young, and maybe that has, you know, maybe Safin's obsessed with her and he's made his own version of her or something, um, which if we're gonna go down the cloning route, I am fully on board, sign me up, I could not be more excited about that. One of my favourite Bond video games is this little beauty here, Agent Under Fire, which, um, and again, I don't think I'm spoiling anything by saying this for people who um, have not played the game, but the uh, villain's plot in this game revolves around cloning, and it's a, it's a bit more sort of extreme. It's, uh, you know, involving cloning world leaders and uh, using them as doubles for uh, kidnapping the real world leaders and replacing them with doubles, and so that's all very silly, but ever since I played that game, like, nearly 20 years ago, I have been excited about about the idea of a Bond story using cloning. So if, if they're going down that route, I am so fully on board. I'm, I want that kind of outrageous plot to come back to Bond. So even though these are spoilers, they have revealed these details, it is still somewhat up to speculation kind of whether or not this character is going to in fact be Bond's genetic daughter, or whether she's a, a clone, and of course that means that that doesn't mean that Bond wouldn't have some kind of fatherly instinct towards the girl. And to be honest, I'm I'm quite up for them exploring that dimension of Bond. How would he react? We very rarely see Bond interact with children at all in the series. Um, what man with the golden gun? He pushes a boy in a in a dirty canal. And oof, any other any other instances? He terrifies a young boy and his mum in the living daylights. So I guess my main kind of takeaway from that is that it is an interesting concept. It they it will allow them to do something that they haven't done before, that we haven't seen before, and I would be interested in seeing that explored. Whether or not it's well handled or not, we'll have to wait until until November. Maybe even November 2022, who knows? <laughs> And it is also worth bearing in mind that just because this was filmed, just because it was on the call sheet and all this kind of stuff, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be 
in the final film in a form that we, you know, that, that we're speculating about here. Obviously, I mean, you know, if you'd have looked at some of the shooting materials of Quantum of Solace, you would have, you know, been <laughs> sat in the cinema thinking, right, I know we end with uh, Bond going and killing Mr. White, and then, of course, in the finished film, we don't have that scene. So there are always, uh, films are, you know, uh, what, what what is the saying? A film is made, you know, three times in the scripting, in the shooting, and then in the editing. It's like, and they can be three different beasts entirely so I, you know, it sounds that these that the use of this character is going to be quite extensive in the film so I think it's unlikely that she wouldn't be in the film but who knows kind of what avenue they're gonna go down in the post or what avenue they have gone down in the post-production um, and that could have changed intention from from shooting so there's one other thing that has been talked about, uh, and again, Joe covered this in his video, and I've covered it in No Time to Die speculation videos in the past as well, um, that, uh, you know, what if James Bond is going to die in this film? And this is something that has kind of been inferred out of some of the spoilers. As far as I'm aware, there was never any kind of, like, direct confirmation about this. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I've, I've said it before. I do not think that James Bond is a character that you can kill off. Um, Joe uh, made a very astute point, I felt, about comparing it to some more recent superhero films that have kind of gone down the route of killing off the leading man, and regardless of how I feel about those films, because I think there's one in particular um, that, that I thought handled that really, really well, um, but there is a precedent for that in comics where it's, you know, characters, as far as I'm aware, are constantly existing in different universes, being killed off and then rebooted, coming back, all that kind of stuff. Um, that doesn't really happen in Bond. Yes, we end Fleming's from Russia with love thinking that Bond may have died, but um, it's not really a big... Uh, you know, element of the series. I think James Bond is the ultimate survivor. He always gets the job done. And plus, just as a plot device, I, I don't like the hero must sacrifice himself to save the day. He must give his own life and all this. I just, I find it very lazy. Um, it's a bit, you know, one of the reasons why a, a criticism for me of License to Kill is that they do a whole like, oh, you killed my friend's wife and that's going to motivate me to go and uh, kill you, Mr. Villain. Um, I like License to Kill, don't get me wrong, but just uh, as, as a plot devices, I don't like just, like, a death of a supporting character to spur on revenge, or uh, a hero sacrificing themselves to ultimately save the day. I think it's just, it's just overdone, and I don't think you need to do that with James Bond. I think it's actually more interesting for heroes to save the day and then remain alive, but again, this is just purely speculation. I'm not a fan as for what, everything that I said about... <laughs> Um, finding it hard to get het up about th about plot details that exist purely in concept. I am really not a fan. The one <laughs> exception that I make is James Bond dying, which I just can't imagine coming out of a cinema feeling satisfied by that development. Um, so let's hope that that doesn't actually make it into the film. Or at least that's my take on it. I mean, would people like that? Like, would anyone actually be sort of okay with James Bond sacrificing himself to save the day, to save his daughter, let's say, or, or save a miniature version of Madeline, um, who knows? Uh, but I'm curious to know what your guys' feelings are about this. Um, like I say, I kind of want this video to be, the comment section here, to be the more contained uh, talk about these spoilers, so Please don't go posting about these things on my other videos because I don't I don't want anyone else to be spoiled if people don't want to be spoiled um, or if there's even an, a chance that people aren't un, uh, aren't spoiled um, by this stage really. So those are my two cents on these particular spoilers. If you would like to share your thoughts, then please do so in the comment section below. And below you can also find links to my various social media pages, including my Facebook and my Twitter and indeed my Patreon page where you can follow um, the link there to go to that site to find ways of how to go one extra step in supporting this channel. Um, the continued patronage of the people on that site is uh, really encouraging and quite overwhelming to be honest and um, my, I cannot express my gratitude uh, uh, well enough, I don't think, but it's uh, that continued support is really quite galvanizing and it really uh, I find it quite inspiring actually to keep continuing 
developing this channel and trying to, to make it the very best version of, of what it can be. So thank you, thank you, thank you, patrons. You're very, very kind. And all that being said, until next time, Bond fans, so long for now.